Welcome back to Not So Grand Garage. Don't forget, you've got three weeks left. I've got the 10% discount code to WVO Designs. I'll put that discount code in the description of the video, as well as links to their website. So if you've been thinking about investing in a centrifuge like this, now would be a good time to do it. But anyways, back to what we're supposed to be doing. I'm out in the fuel shed today, and I'm going to do another small batch test. Uh, today's test is going to be heated oil through the centrifuge versus thinned oil with no heat through the centrifuge. Basically, what we'll be doing is we're going to pull out of this corner tote this time for both batches. So I'll pull five gallons out. We will run it through my normal way at approximately five gallons an hour at approximately 200 degrees through the centrifuge and see what we're left with in the bowl. I'll take some weights and do it like we always do it. So the second part of this batch is gonna be four gallons approximately from that tote there. I'll mix in roughly a gallon of gasoline, maybe a little less. Uh, we'll see what it looks like and then let it sit for a little bit. I'll pump it up there and let it go through the centrifuge with no heat. It's so one of the big requests is to see if the heat is really necessary or if you can just thin your oil down and run it through. Uh, up front, that's how I did it for six years before I got the uh, direct drive setup. On my pressure driven setup, I would run five to seven gallons of gasoline in with a 50 gallon batch of oil and just run it through no heat. And I never had any issues out of it or so I thought. So, today, we'll find out what the real difference is. So I'm gonna to try to keep these uh, small batch test videos fairly short. So since I've already gone through a fairly in-depth uh, look at how I'll do it, uh, you've already seen how I do it. I will uh, focus on the batch results and go from there. Hopefully it's uh, fairly conclusive right off the bat. So let's get at it. This is the pre-batch weight, first run. Centrifuge is not spotless, that's okay. We are at three pounds, 13.8 ounces. So I've got the uh, top bucket full for the first run. So let's see, uh, let's see how it does. Another little benefit that a, uh, a viewer pointed out as far as doing these small batch tests it's allowing me to see just how dirty these totes are and the oil in them before I ever run a big batch. So I can pull a small batch off of them and kind of get an idea of what I can expect in the bowl after each run versus not. So sometimes I've gotten oil that's been really wet, filled the bowl up really quick, but uh, this way I can catch that before that happens. But anyways, let's get this first batch ran. Centrifuge is up to speed. Heater's warm and oil is flowing. So, let's see, oil flowing down the tube. So I'm gonna let this run. Should take about an hour, thereabouts. And uh, I'll bring you guys back out here and we'll go on and mix up the batch with gasoline and get some weights, run it through, see where we're at. Well, the first batch just finished up. So I'm gonna go on and pop this lid off. It just is rather hot. And we'll take a look and see how our oil from that tote is looking. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. We'll let it drain down just a little bit and uh, get it out, get it on the scale, get some weights on it. Got our scale zeroed out. So, uh, got this loose. I learned from the first few times 
This uh, rotor's pretty hot after a batch. I'll come out right down on the scale. We are at three pounds, 14.5 ounces. So I'll go on and get this cleaned out, let this heater cool down a good bit and get another weight on it. And I'll show you how we will mix up the next run. We're gonna go approximately 20% gasoline to oil and let it run through with no heat and see what we get. Okay, scale is zeroed back out. Got our rotor mostly cleaned out again. So it's not perfect, but it'll work. We got three pounds, move that back a little bit. Three pounds, 13.6 ounces. And she goes back to zero. So I'm going to get set up here real quick as far as mixing this oil up and show you guys what I'm gonna do. I think I've got a one gallon fuel container here. So I'll fill it up with gas or close to it. And uh, we'll pour that into a bucket first. We'll mix it with oil, bring it almost to the top, give it a good mix and then hand pour it in to the bucket up there. Uh, I may let it sit for a little bit, see if anything settles out of it. Uh, I know a lot of people do long-term settling with gasoline mixed in, uh, but I don't really have the time to show that right now. But uh, yeah, I'll go on and get set up and show you how I'm gonna do it. So I've got a one gallon gas can it is a little more than three quarter full. Now we're going to add it to our bucket first. Now guys, when messing with gasoline, especially when uh, you are mixing up fuel, doing stuff like this, uh, if this is the method you're going to be using, which obviously you'd be doing it in a drum, not an open container like this, be absolutely sure to uh, keep this away from ignition sources. So even with it uh, mixed with oil, it is highly flammable at that point. Uh, so yeah, no ignition sources. Uh, I do have a heater running out here, but the actual unit is outside. It's just blowing hot air into the uh, shed. So no issues there. Also, when you go to run the batch, be absolutely sure your centrifuge or drum or what have you is vented to the outside. Uh, it's not something to play around with. The vapor that will come off of this uh, is flammable. Uh, if it meets an ignition source, you're gonna have a bad day. So, just a note. Uh, but anyways, I've got the gallon of gasoline mixed in. This did have a little bit of oil in the bottom. As you can see, it's super thin. So, I'm gonna go on and fill this bucket up from that tote in the corner, just like the first batch. Got the bucket full, and uh, not sure if you can see it on the video, but there's rings where the gasoline is in it. So I'm gonna take this piece of uh, conduit I've got laying out here and mix this up. Okay, been mixing this for a good bit. It's uh, still relatively thick. And this is a 20% mix, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. Uh, you kind of see it, uh, stuff separating out on here. It's kind of interesting to see, but uh, I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit and then we will go on and pour it in our bucket up there and start the centrifuge back up. It's, it'll take about an hour to run, thereabouts. I will uh, set the flow rate about the same as I had with just straight oil. Again, no heat, which uh, this is cooling down. As you can tell, I can hold my hand on it and I will have this unplugged and see how it works. And see if there's any difference in just mixing uh, your thinner in first or if the heat does a better job. So let me, uh, Get some stuff together. I gotta get the ladder back out here to uh, climb up there and we'll see what happens. So, as you can see, heater is unplugged. And again, 
be absolutely sure to vent outside. Uh, when it comes to running any fuel blend that's got gasoline mixed in with it already. Same goes for your finish drum because I have this mixed with gasoline sitting in here. It has vents open to the outside. Uh, I don't mess around with that. But anyways, uh, batch is ready to run. So I'm gonna get the ladder back out of here, bring the centrifuge back up to speed and get the flow rate set. Let this run through and here in about an hour, we will have some results. Just a little side note, uh, just stepped outside of the shed. Uh, this batch just started with the gasoline mixed in. I can definitely smell gasoline in the, uh, in the air coming from the vent over there off the centrifuge. So, like I said guys, do not mess around when you're using this method. Uh, keep the heat sources and everything away from the vent. Be sure to vent it outside because uh, it could get dangerous really quickly. So, don't mess around with it and uh, yeah. But let's let it run through and see what happens. So it looks like our second batch is done. We're going to shut this centrifuge down. Like I said, no heat. Everything's cold to the touch. I'll let this uh, spin down and then I'll go on and pop the cover off, take it off, uh, let it drain for a little bit, just like I did the first batch, and we'll get weight on it. All right, centrifuge has been sitting for a few minutes now, so it should be drained down fairly well. Get these lids off. And let's see what the verdict is. I can't see too well up there, but it doesn't look too bad. I'll uh, go on and pop it out real quick, let it sit up just like I did the last batch, drain any excess liquid out of the bottom, and we'll get some weights on it. So, I'm going to go on and throw a glove on here. Rotor's not hot, but I'm trying to avoid getting the oil and gas all over my hands. We've got our scale zeroed out. And right down onto the scale. We are at three pounds, 14.25 ounces. So what's that mean? Well, um, on the first batch with heat, we were right at 0.7 ounces of material removed. And with the gasoline blend, we are at 0.65 ounces. So it's really close. Uh, so in theory, you could get away from heat and just use gasoline. But something that's very important to keep in mind, gasoline does not remove water. So heat plays two roles in this setup. The main one, obviously, is thinning the oil down so it allows the, uh, the centrifuge to break the bonds easier, so on and so forth, and get the nastiness out of your oil. The second, which I uh, find very important, is the heat drives off moisture. Now, in this case, our oil was pretty dry, as you could see from the first batch we ran. But, uh, yeah, if the oil was wet and we didn't know it, the gasoline's not going to drive off moisture nearly as effectively as heat does. So, um, if you're going to use this method, you need to be sure that your oil is dry. There's different ways that you can test that. Uh, I've heard of people, you know, heating a small quantity of oil to see if, uh, see if the moisture separates and pops and sizzles and so on and so forth. Um, I've never tried that, and I don't know that I would, but yeah, there's different things you can do, um, but yeah, as far as just removing particulate, let's, uh, I'm gonna pop this rotor back out, take it outside, and take a look inside it. 
out here in the light. I mean, as far as it goes, it looks very similar to the heated run. Uh, I'm not seeing any free moisture uh, in the bottom of the rotor, which I will note, I did see a little with the heated run. So there may still be a little bit of moisture in that oil, which kind of went to the point I was trying to make. Heat drives off moisture far better than just thinning does. So if you can make sure your oil is dry, uh, thinning with gasoline and running your blend will work fine. There's some safety precautions you need to take, obviously, such as being darn sure that your centrifuge is vented outside and that there's no ignition sources around because you will get gasoline vapor out of that vent, uh, no matter if you're heating it or not. So another note, if you are just filtering your oil, yeah, I would definitely, definitely add gasoline to the mix then, especially if, as long as you're not heating it. Uh, some people get away with heating it. I just wouldn't do it. Uh, but yeah, mix your gasoline before you go through the filtering process. Uh, say you're going to filter a, say you set up a 55 gallon batch like this, but you just run it through filters, like a bag filter setup that we've already tested. I would go on and add your gasoline to that drum and uh, give it some settle time because that's going to break bonds as well, just like heat does. And then run it through your filter and you'll end up with a cleaner product. So yeah, if you're just filtering stuff, definitely add thinner first. It makes sense. Um... Me personally, I like using heat with the direct drive centrifuge. It, uh, it works well and moisture is a big concern to me because I noticed uh, that before I went to this unit and started heating things that I could not run my oil in freezing temperatures. And I'm pretty sure that's because I was leaving moisture in the batches and didn't know it. Um, after I went to this heated setup, and the direct drive, I don't have that problem anymore, and I can run it down. I've ran it as low as 5 degrees Fahrenheit, and it did okay. Obviously, the truck wasn't making as much power as it was because the, the oil is thicker. So, as long as it can be pumped to the motor, it'll burn it. But, yeah, which I've already gone over all that. So, with all that said, I think that about wraps this one up. Uh, if you would, be sure to hit that like button because that really helps us out with the YouTube algorithms and stuff. Um, if you've got any comments, questions, complaints, drop them in the comment section below. I know, because I've, I've read a few comments on this, I know this is not a super scientific method of testing this stuff, but it is a real world method of testing this stuff. Um, I'm not in a lab scenario. Uh, I can't guarantee that the oil is exactly the same batch to batch but I'm getting as close as I can so yeah I understand it could be done better but uh, that's not what I'm doing I don't want to do a super scientific method I want to do real world stuff to show you guys how this stuff acts just like you would be using it just like you would be doing it because you too won't know if the oil is exactly the same so on and so forth but yeah uh, if you want to uh, support the channel, there's a PayPal link in the description of every video. We've got super thanks enabled too, so feel free to hit that. So yeah, we appreciate you watching. Please subscribe.